Who's your barber talk? Who's your barber talk family? We're rolling. Who's your barber talk? Yeah. Episode back, six. Episode We're six. back with the man himself, JT Harms. Such an Hams? electric Harms. name. Harms. 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 IU soccer yeah. goalie. Milwaukeean. Milwaukeean. Player. Keep going. going. Player. Cooper. Dripper. Good looker. Stepper, good looker. <laughs> gentleman. Coffee Scholar. grater. Coffee grater. Hey, one listen. His interest in art. Mm. His interest in art, oh. one thing that I admire a lot yeah. about JT. This is this I, I feel like you look at JT, you can think a lot of things. I would never imagine that that. You would be as artsy as you are, or into the arts. Mm. I appreciate that. I think, did, we, I think, did we talk about that? We we've talked a little bit about it, but I've heard more from like uh, Q. Whenever Q, you went, yeah. whenever you went, whenever you went across yeah, the, uh, Amsterdam, he was across like the pond. He was like literally, he w- he wanted to go to the museums. He wanted to go to the art. Any <laughs> anything like he was like he wanted to go to the and library. He, and, and he wanted nothing to do with that. Yeah, no, nothing. he was like fuck this stuff, dude. Yeah. Let's go somewhere else. You'd be like, all right, bro, I'll see you in two hours. Yeah, I'm gonna go take a nap. I'm like, all right, we're in Paris, but yeah. Yeah. No, dude. And you have great hair. Thank you. Hey, shout out Barbara Kane. Shout out Barbara shout Kane. Barbara Kane. Faded Barber Listen. Shop. Listen. Book your appointment. When when you have a nice canvas to work with, it's way <laughs> no, way easier. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, no, but realistically, I think that uh, you're a magnificent dude. For, from oh the God. time that I met you to now, you don't meet very many like very genuine guys <laughs> that that just get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thank you, and man. you're one of those guys for Stand sure. Guy. You guys are too, man. This is crazy for me because, like, I mean, I knew you separately. Like, we met at a basketball game. Yep. I knew Trey separately. Like, when I first got here and. Nick Sessler was like, yo, you want to go, like, check out this shop? And I was like, all right. And then I knew Jack Damn. separately from probably La Una. No, nah, but, like, <laughs> but, like, we all came, like, it's like when this came together, I was like, man, like, these are, like, three of my favorite people in Bloomington. And, like, it's just funny that, like, it was just fate, you know? You guys Full circle paths. moment. Yeah. We kind of did doing a podcast. I was like, when you first brought up, I was like, wait. Like, are you Trey serious? and Jack, like, this like, is the, the one match like, made in heaven, yeah. right? This, yeah. this is it. Yeah. It was crazy. We, we talked about this on the first episode, but whenever Jack and I had first like communicated about this or a, any idea of it, we were talking like, who would be a good third party? And it was like, <laughs> dude, there was nobody. The first person no I said, I was like, bro, Trey Humph, he's going to say yeah. some crazy stuff. <laughs> yes. He's going to be he outlandishly himself. Literally like. I asked you, bro. I, I go, listen, who is a person that is willing to say anything and, and has a character and the Indiana Bloomington the DNA, blood. right? Dude. He bleeds it. He bleeds this shit, bro. I'm not a townie, though. No, People you're not. Don't get it twisted. People you're have been slandering me, calling me a townie and I shit. always think you're a townie, bro. I don't know why, bro, but I always like. It's because I'm just that guy. <laughs> I'm, that, I'm that Hoosier, G. Like I said, I want motherfuckers to look at me and think Indiana University. Yeah. They I definitely want, do. I want Indiana Listen. University to change. And they don't believe you. You can pull your pants down and show them. Yeah, uh, that, yeah they asked that. I'm about the He life. said, and I'll I'm walk my white ass back across. <laughs> yeah, back across AMI. <laughs> <laughs> back across Kirkwood. <laughs> Kirkwood. Oh. Kirkwood been hitting, G. Kirkwood's the spot. Kirkwood is the spot. Kirkwood's and it's the looking spot. Like, it's looking like, you know, for next year, I'll be able to keep the spot. That's Keep huge. this spot? Yeah. So I'll be you heard it here first on the podcast. Be, hey, I, I, I kind of see huge. it growing. I think we... we what do you mean by that, Ken? Think, yeah, I think you should... What do you mean by that? Look, we should look at some of the numbers ah. I have in my pretty little phone. No, I love the numbers. The numbers wanna, are always going to be talk numbers. So my plan, my plan is, is that next year, I have my, my employee, Ethan, uh, Ethan Lax from Columbus, who's, Ethan. who's younger... Shout uh, out Columbus is gonna, Vintage. ...is going to... Yeah, Columbus Vintage. Check him out. He's going to run the shop. Um, and this is the this is the plan. So he'll run the Bloomington location, and then I'm gonna try to open up a shop in like somewhere else in the Midwest, um, and just do like the general vintage stuff. But there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen before then, or just do online. I'm, I'm running. I'm starting up another like online operation, um, selling on like Grailed and Depop and eBay this this winter, just getting rid of a bunch of extra product. You know, there's a lot of avenues I can take it. You know. What is a what is a uh, an inventory room look like for you? Right now, it's my garage. 
It used to be my my basement. <laughs> what are you laughing at yeah, over he's there? Giggling, bro. So, so the, everything. I'm enjoying this, bro. Let's go. Have you seen? Have you helped him out in the garage at all? Listen, yeah. I've seen everything. He, he helped. He helped me mm-hmm. out, bro. He introduced me to jeans. Yeah, yeah, honestly, bro, this motherfucker life changing. Here we are, no like, drip. Just a couple guys changing, in jeans. Changing, couple they guys felt in jeans. like guys in jeans, man. They felt like sweatpants, and I don't know if it's the jeans in Connecticut didn't raise me right over there, but I put like, on some Hoosier A one vintage jeans. I might be wrong, but I think life. everybody in Connecticut the the jeans are like joggers. Yeah, we, yeah. that's what we do. You know that's what I mean? Super, Not like necessarily joggers bro, for real. I would wear but the jeans to are class. slim fit. Yeah. Pajamas was my thing back then. Not in high necessarily school. that Who's Your A1 vibe, the 94, 96 yeah. Levi's. Kick back, oh, new, yeah. new balance. These are nothing, bro. These are just some $20 jeans. Anyways, JT, <coughs> thank you for coming on the thank show. You, for having you me. know, we've been wanting to, we've been talking about this for a, a little bit now, and so it's, it's good to finally have you on. I, I kind of want to hand the mic over to you and give you the opportunity to share kind of your journey to becoming the goalie at indiana like what what does something like that take what was the journey like in childhood soccer to high school and kind of just share your journey brother <laughs> man where do you start <laughs> so basically i was born in, in no i'm kidding i like it it is nothing what i'd planned for it to be like honestly like i, I didn't know i wanted to play soccer like i played every sport growing up um you know since i could walk it was soccer baseball my dad wrestled at wisconsin um my uncle was the coach at north dakota state in ohio for basketball so grandpa played football i had like kids say they had soccer in their blood i had nothing you know (laughs) so like i just had a soccer ball and i had friends and so you know it kind of started in you know like any other kid on school playground um yeah man i just played because i loved it and uh you know, then it wasn't until I was like nine or ten that I tried out for like the local club team, and by the grace of God, I had a coach who uh, he played at Bayer Leverkusen and ended up in Milwaukee. I don't know how or why or what he saw in me, but he was kind of like, "Yeah, I'm gonna take you in. Like, I'm gonna show you how to become a goalkeeper, and we're gonna work together, and you're gonna train with the oldest guys." And I was just like, "Awesome, you know? Like, I get to get dirty, like have fun, and you know." So I was still I was doing everything, and then. It wasn't until I was I was 13 and I got a, a call one day from a guy with a, a British accent and I was with my mom and she picked up the phone and he was like yeah uh, we're interested in your son to, to play for us and she was like play for us where and he was like in Minnesota we have a it was like a boarding school essentially but they had an academy so basically it was like one of like the first of its kind in the U.S. where you could leave home and go be somewhere and like fully commit to soccer and it was a there's a school included it's called Shattuck St. Mary's and so they're uh they do hockey as well so it's hockey soccer and uh I think the figure skating um but Sidney Crosby went there Jonathan yeah. Taves like wow. great hockey players um but they also the soccer aspect and for me it was like I was 13 never planned on leaving home like I was yeah. mama's boy like even like sleepovers when you're like eight years old I'm like yeah you know what like I'd rather just go back fam, home you know? like, <laughs> no, for real. and then yeah I was like I was 13 and I think I was thinking about it, I'm like well like if this is what I want if I like want to get out of Wisconsin and yeah. have a chance at this like I, I we don't have an academy here so I need to take the opportunity so I took it and kind of just ran from there I got my first call up after my freshman year for the under 15 national team and I was with the, the under 17s and then my junior year I moved to Columbus and joined the Columbus Crew Academy um, that's where I met Sam and uh, so that relationship's gone on for a long time and then uh, yeah man I've been all over went overseas for a little bit in the summer um, I went to Duke committed to Duke I was there for a year and a half so I was gonna ask about that specifically yeah. coming out of high school <clears throat> Had had Indiana looked at you? Yeah. Then that's a funny story. Um, because I like I didn't know what I wanted to do for college. Um, I had interests and had great offers, but I just didn't know what I wanted. If college was what I wanted, and um, Indiana came around and I got a phone call and I was like, man, like, all right, like they're, I mean, eight yeah. stars. It speaks it's for Indiana, itself. Yeah. It's Indiana. Like this is where you want to be in yeah. college. And they called and. They already had a full roster with goalkeepers. I'm like, why is Indiana calling me? And they said, hey, man, and I don't know if they would mind me saying this, but uh, they were like, hey, man, yeah, we got a goalkeeper coming in from Chicago. 
um, and we don't know if he's going to be ready. And so we would, you know, we're looking at you and the plan is if he comes in and he's not ready, we want to make an offer. I'm like, awesome. Like, yeah, sweet. Had a, a visit planned, everything. Well, the kid was Roman Salentano, uh, <laughs> and he comes in and he's insane. Crushes it, absolutely crushes it. I mean, he was here three years, Generation Adidas contract, yeah, first round pick, and he is killing it. And he's the man. He's a good friend of mine, and he, he's a, a big mentor for me. But he, uh, yeah, he's at FC Cincinnati. He was here at the game today, so yeah. shout out Roman. But oh, that's awesome. yeah, crazy. It's funny how it works. So I, we already had the conversation going, and then when I entered the portal. Um, we were obviously familiar and yeah. went from there. I texted Sam. I'm like, Sam, I'm in the portal, man. Make it happen. No, that's so, so you're far. You're coming to Indiana. So. Is there any kind of advice that he's given you, guidance, you know, becoming the Indiana Gold? Welcome to the Who's Your Daddy Barbershop. <laughs> but, yeah, any guidance that he's kind of given yeah. you, uh, you know, to take over this role? Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, <laughs> As soon as I came in, he uh, he was like, he took me under his wing. He was like, yeah, this is what it's like here in Indiana. And. Um, you know, there's going to be ups and downs. And he talked about his experiences, like mistakes he's made, big games he's lost, and what that feels like. I mean, that's a kid he played on the national championship. He, he, uh, he's been through it all with Indiana. So yeah. he, he taught me that, you know, it's not going to be smooth sailing always. And, you know, you're a goalkeeper. At times you're going to be the, the, uh, the people are going to put blame on you. And you're going to have to, you know, just take it off the chin sometimes and get through the hard moments. And so, yeah, he, he's, been, he's been huge for me. And to see him succeed at the level that he's at, it's inspiring the, go- the goalkeeper is a lot like the kicker yeah on the football no. team no that's, that's, I, now hear me that's, out here there's, 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 there's more praise good analogy to like it now i totally I, the backbone if you you can have a great team but if your fucking goalkeeper think, sucks you're done the goalkeeper is like the head coach it's it's like a mini coach in a way like you're always organizing like you're always 100%. talking jack hit a take let's go <laughs> no <laughs> jack did not hit a take I I, I I hear it, but yeah, I think yeah. that they, in those moments that you were talking about where it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're either loved by everybody or hated by yeah, everybody. That's yeah. All in one moment. That's the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, there are yeah. situational, like, situations where it's like, same same thing with the kicker. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's a make it or break it moment. Yeah, and it's when, like, it, when it comes down to You know what I'm yeah. saying? Not throughout the whole game. Yeah, Nobody yeah. gives a fuck about the kickers sitting over there. Shout right. out all the kickers out there doing great. Yeah. Kickers are awesome. Oh, yeah. God. I, I kickers need love, man. Yes, yes, they yes. Do. But by no means, they're just as important, but not nearly as important as the goalie. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, and that's the thing. Like, for me, it's like I always tell myself in the last 15, last 10 minutes of the game, it's just like you're in your head saying, I got to come up with one big save here. Yeah, one big yeah. save, and we'll be good. Yeah. Because, like, like, today was a perfect example. Ohio State, you're at home. Like, our team's crushing it. Backline, super solid. And so, like, recently, you know, I, I don't have the busiest days, and that's great for me. And so, but, you know, if I go 90 minutes and I don't have many touches, and then all of a sudden you're in the final minutes of the game and you have to make a save. Get ready make for the a touch, moment, yeah. You know, it's like, you better be there. And yeah. Today, I like, I didn't have much all day, and then all of a sudden, one moment, deflection comes in, goal, 1-1, one, one, Ohio State, Indiana. It's like, yeah. man, I didn't get any... Yeah, I don't have any big moments in yeah. this game. All people remember is 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Then, thank God, Carson Henderlong. Yeah. Eight minutes left, 2-1. Yeah. Scenes. But yeah. yeah. That's that's the job. That's yeah. the, the tough part of it. Comes with the territory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just like you said, being able to learn, like, taking taking those hits on the chin, being able to, you know what I'm saying, always yeah. get back up Move from, on. you know what I'm saying, it is, it is a constant journey. You got to keep moving, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, and coming out of, like, transferring from Duke and, like, going in and, it wasn't what you expected initially and man like i was in like the lowest place i was so like i was lonely going through it and like people didn't see that from the outside and then having gone in the portal and getting a second life and like a new energy and it's like now if like if shit hits the fan like i'm not it's not gonna affect me like yeah. i've already been through it man like what was it like uh kind of like recreating relationships coming in as a leader because it you came in um not only starting but like as a captain too like you 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 came in from duke and was in a high leadership role for the team right yeah yeah no i definitely uh when i came in like the guys were top class like oh they're awesome they invited me right away i mean i known sammy um a couple of alums like aiden morris he's at columbus crew now but um he came through you and um i knew maloon 
he's a roommate of mine and he played at Columbus with me and so those guys were you know the first to welcome me and be my advocate and say you know what like this kid you'll be all right like yeah. you know so they had my back and then um I don't know man it's just it's one of those things like I feel like at this point it's just kind of ingrained in me I don't seek it and you could, leadership has to come naturally yeah no 100% um, but yeah it's it's been something at Duke I was the captain and so all kind of all through my trajectory as a player like that's just one aspect of me and I think that that, that m- makes me as a player as well that's one of my attributes so well, not, and I think with the the transfer por- portal being as relevant as it as it is right now that's something that like a lot of people no matter what sport can learn from you know what I'm saying just because you had like really good relationships on the last team that you were in you know what I'm saying you can come in and recreate even better relationships and stay in that same leadership role just by knowing how to be yourself really well yeah what was it that made you kind of decide to leave Duke yeah no so I mean I went into Duke um we had a great class and I mean it was amazing our, our the team was awesome the school was amazing um I loved you know, 99% of it is just the 1% was I didn't feel like I was developing and I wasn't, you know, maximizing my potential. And uh, at the end of the day, I wasn't, I didn't feel, you know, really like I didn't feel belonging. And, you know, Duke's yeah. a, a great school, but I mean, it's small. It's 5,000 kids. It's, oh, geez, uh, it is. Yeah, yeah, 5,000 undergrad. Um, How do they have such good sports programs? <sighs> Dudes, man. Yeah, man. Coach K. It's, it's Coach a, K. It's a blue blood, man. It's, it's yeah, crazy. It's culture. 5,000 students? Undergrad, yeah. I mean, you know everyone. I walk in the dining hall. I mean, you know everyone yeah. in your class, that is. And uh, That's so weird, We got bro. 45. That was what my it's high school crazy. was. Yeah, when I got my here, I was, was like. 4, yeah. My high school was 4,000. My high school was 4,000 kids. Yeah. 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 So, and we were not a national championship. We're and well, and 4,000, 5,000, and then all those kids, you know, it's a different, they're coming from a different socioeconomic background. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's a different, you know, they're all, a lot of East Coast kids. Um, oh, man. But I like. <laughs> um, uh, we do not like the East yeah. Coast people. Sorry, no, guys. but like, it was, it was good, man. I, I loved it. Um, but I just, I knew for my development, I needed more. Um, and I wasn't happy. And, um, yeah, I didn't feel like it was. It was. I didn't feel like the school reflected me or my values, and I wanted yeah. to start a, a new chapter. And you got injured too, right? Yeah, I was dealing with an injury through a lot of it. So I did my ankle freshman year, and um, that was COVID. It was. It was a mess. Yeah, it sucks. So it was. It was a hard time. It was a lonely time, for sure. Through through that explanation and, and Trey's uh, comment that he said he lost about ten percent in sales this week. Nobody from the East Coast is come, coming to shop. Oh, shut He's up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, yeah, then, yeah. I'm not going to make any comments. East Coast, no love. No love for the East uh, Coast. Um, you guys suck. Yeah, so would you do anything differently looking back? You know, you decide to go to Duke and, and kind of give me some advice. It, give, give some of those young goalies, those young soccer players in high school some advice uh, just on the recruiting process and like what to look for uh, when when you're going through these visits and yeah. and just tell me kind of you know give some advice if you yeah. have handled yourself any differently through the visits yeah no I mean uh, the first thing like when it comes to the visits it's like it's getting feedback from the players um, obviously like you know the coaches will will lead that and you will you'll see the school but you know you're obviously it, it's a visit they're gonna show you the, the best things the best aspects of the best parts. But when you hear it from the players who are on the team, like, you know what it's really like day in, day out. Um, but then it's also, it's just life, man. It's like you want a boss that, you know, that you look up to and you want to be in an environment where you know that, you know, your teammates, your coaches are going to push you. I'm not saying that wasn't Duke, but yeah, I'm saying yeah. that this is just life. Stuff like, to look for. Yeah, yeah. You, want, you want the environment to bring the best out of you. Yeah. And um, for me, like, I wouldn't change a thing. Like, I needed that. I needed to go to Duke for a year and a half, and I needed to – go through the mud a little bit and get shaken up and I didn't I thought I was invincible before that and I was like man my career is like this like you know and then it wasn't (laughs) until you know you're like oh man I'm human like I didn't realize that that would have affected me the way it did oh yeah this can happen to me too yeah 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 absolutely and I mean I I, we've talked about I know your story and oh yeah you relate with that so it's it's a big part of growing up being able to go through the mud and that's what we talked about this uh in episode five it was like uh, Steve Harvey has this anal- analogy where he's like, in order for a seed to grow, it has to be put in dirt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that there's like, there's a powerful message behind it. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we choose to hear it. 
Absolutely. You, we talk a little bit about leadership. If you make the commitment to come to Indiana, I mean, this is a well-known program, but also the coach has a bit of a pretty darn good reputation yeah. too. What's that relationship look yeah. like? No, it's uh, it's just it's the culture of Indiana that's different from everything else. Like, there's nothing like it. And with coming into here, it's there's like the the little stuff. Um, you know, the the expectation, in the locker room, like the the timeliness of things. Uh, what players are doing off the field. There's a whole new set of standards, and it's the culture. And I remember the first day walking in the locker room, and guys are talking about winning the Natty or playing in the the College yeah. Cup, and I'm like. We didn't have these conversations. Yeah. Like, and I remember my first practice. I'm going to come in. I'm super pumped. You know, I got my new IU gear on, <laughs> lace up the boots. We get out there. We're playing. And the first poor touch, um, the, the level kind of dropped. And all of a sudden, whistle goes. And our coach stops it and goes, do you think that playing in a Big Ten championship game in a Sweet 16 game is going to set the standard for us? And all I'm thinking is, and I just came from Duke. We lost in the ACC championship game, and we lost in the Sweet 16. That was a pretty darn good season. But here, it's like, uh-uh, that's not going to cut it. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I'm in for a long one. Like, this is this is different. So yeah. it was awesome. And, like, it's real. You can't fake that. And when guys talk about playing in a college cup and, you know, we're going to be dynamite, you know, all this, it's like, it, you can't fake that. And yeah. It was real. I felt it. And you saw the season last year dude speak people don't understand how powerful it is to like hear something you know what i'm saying because once you when you hear somebody say something it's like i could read something all day but once somebody says it it becomes a vibration it becomes yeah. becomes real to you you can hear it and you can feel however you want to about it but if you believe it too then now there's more than one person that believes it yeah you know what i'm saying if they really believe it they're going to work for it you know what i'm saying so yeah. if you get a whole group of guys that realistically yeah, believe in. in the same damn goal and lock in on it yeah just like last year you can see what could really happen yeah you know what i mean yeah absolutely and that's like it feels the same way this year like at this time last year in the season you know there's a lot of voices outside of the program saying ah the record's not there you know this that and the other but in the locker room it's like man we know we're so good yeah like, we're gonna be all right and yeah and the results are starting to come and it's like all of a sudden everyone's like man Something's going on here. We knew mm. what was going on. Yeah, we yeah, and, yeah. And you guys win when you need to, like tournament team. Like well, as long as as long as you know you meet the criteria to play and compete, you know at, at, at you know the next level or you know in the continuation, you are fine. It's like yeah. even if it takes making adjustments. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. knowing that the team that you guys have this year is totally different than the team that you guys had last year. Yeah. yeah. So being able to move people around and allow them to adjust and and other areas than maybe we thought that they were going to be sitting in, you know, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. I think seeing some of the adjustments that you guys have made has really helped out tremendously in being able to, A, score, defend, and just all around play together as a team. I think everybody's kind of fallen into their role. Yeah. The finishing seems to be, you know, for a second there was a little dry finishing yeah, spell, yeah, yeah. but now it's like, you know, yeah. back to Yeah, it. you just got to work through those. It's like, man, like, if you're not scoring, just keep shooting. Yeah, yeah. shooting. Dude. Keep shooting. Shooters shoot, yeah, and you guys shooter, got a shooter. lot of shooters. Yeah, yeah, got a lot of shooters. Sam's yeah. having a fucking great season. He's killing it, man. He's he got big, t big one of a player of the week, right? Yeah, he just yeah. runs around so freely. Yeah, like he, like he really is. He's got this ego. It's like I don't care who you are, where you're from. Nine, nine's and getting I, to the end line. Yeah, <laughs> he said that. That's how he. It was so funny to me to see that. That's how he referred to himself. I was like, damn, that's so cocky. Yeah. What, know. nine? Close yeah, nine. he goes, nine. Nine don't stretch. Yeah, yeah, nine yeah. Don't I stretch. was like, oh, damn, yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 so now we, now that we have a, a goalie and, and someone that actually cares about their diet, I would assume, what's kind of, <laughs> what's what's your what's your, what's your your day-to-day -day diet looking like? Yeah, it's a lot different than Sam, and it's been for years. I mean, when I was, <laughs> in, when I was in Columbus, they had, I mean, I, I remember being in the first scene, we were all doing, we did the keto diet, and that was like oh, from, the, from the coach. And, um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the first team coach and the whole first team, um, everyone on the keto diet. So like, what? Yeah, like it was. And obviously, I mean, Sam was not doing the keto diet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, you know, was he, uh, he was on the nerd rope diet. Yeah, he was on the nerd rope diet. Yeah, but like, I mean, uh, for me, it's like I I'm very aware of that stuff, and like for me, like I need that, and also for the mental part of it, like it just yeah. like it helps me know that like, I'm doing everything I can. Mm. But like everyone has their own thing, and like 
if if Sam needs a nerd rope before a game, by all means, man, get I'll get that you three in of you. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like and yeah. So it's all it's all personal. So yeah. How do you kind of deal with the pressure of not only being a goalie of a soccer team in and of itself, but playing for Indiana University is a whole lot of pressure. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. It's just embracing it, and like we always remind ourselves and our coaches remind us like the reason you come to Indiana is to play in the big games and like yeah. that's what you want and I can't like stress that enough like we go play Maryland this Friday and last year we played Maryland everyone had warned me before the game they're like yo go private on Instagram before this game like trust me like it's gonna get bad this can't get that bad like I've heard it all mom sister whatever like you know and anyways we get there and I mean sure enough packed places rocking I'm hearing everything. They have the, they call themselves the crew and they move from each hole um, at halftime just to follow the away goalkeeper yeah, yeah. and just be oh in your ear for 90 gosh. minutes. And there's one point in the game, they go in unison, like a thousand people, all in unison, JT Harms, watch this. And they go, eight, five, eight. I'm going, hold on, east. And I look up and they keep going, it's my home address. Yeah, my home address. And what my parents hell? my parents are back home watching on Big Ten and they're like, GT, did they, were they chanting our home address? And I was like, Yeah, but like I love it. Like I love it. Like that's Bring it on. Like, yeah. Literally. It makes you play that much better, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it's that's the that's the fun Spotlight, stuff. Spotlight, so, man. Yeah, that's what you want. That's what every athlete wants, man. Yeah. If you want to make it the next level, you have to have that. A you have to be of, able to embrace that. Yeah, a little bit of ego, yeah. a little bit of yeah. Yeah. Can you give it back or are we are we chirping back ever or are we more just ignoring no, every you, single comment? As soon say. as you acknowledge them, they've won. Yeah, yeah. see you know, they know that, you're in that's, Because a away what this happens for our basketball games a lot. I don't know if you noticed, but yeah. like even in the preseason games last year, there was like we played some random team and they come in with some some kid who wants to shine in assembly hall and he's airballing every shot. And the second he turns around at the student section and is like, Hey guys, look, I just made that shot in practice. The student section sees that. And for the rest of the game, that kid's getting booed yeah. like he's Kyrie Ir Irving in the yeah. T D Garden. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like fan bases we see <laughs> hey that's just so funny to me they, as soon as as soon as that guy gets taken out they'll be like left right left yeah. every time he takes a step off the court he 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 gave one of these and he hesitated and the entire student section hesitated literally he goes run <laughs> really, that was so bro it was crazy and he did not make another shot every shot was yeah. an air ball but, <laughs> yeah people really get taken out of their game at assembly yeah, it's unique, man. It's there's nothing like it. Like I was, I had the blessing of going to games at Cameron Indoor at Duke, and like mm. that was unique in and of itself. And then you come to you the come student to section. There's down on the floor, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's so a whole sweet. other conversation. Oh, I wish, bro. And if we had that, someone would get attacked. Oh. It would be crazy. I, I, oh. I want to border the entire the thing. entire. It, it, there shouldn't be another option. It should be mandatory. I don't at, know every, not. at every every school. every college. Yeah, every college sport. Sports. It's like hockey, Any but arena. there's no boards. Yes. Imagine. The camera crazies. It's 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 crazy. It's it's legit. There's only like people three come rows in there and they crumble. Do they throw anything on the floor? No. Like and Coach K will be the first one. Like if it ever gets out of control, he's over there and he gives them an old shot too. But like they they know where to draw the line. But like it is it is legit. Like they have people in the student section like monitoring and if if you're not cheering or you're not locked in, like you get the boot, like next man up. Like it's Dang. that, I mean, the camping out, I mean, you know how it is, like Cameron Indoor is tiny. Yeah. You have all these kids who want to go to the game. So like UNC game, you're camping out for months. Months? You ever heard about this? Camp months? If you're camping out for UNC, Duke, at Duke, right? You get a tent, okay? You get a tent and I believe it's like, you get seven tent mates, okay? So you got to pick seven people and the rule is there has to be five people in the tent at all times oh and they do random like they'll <laughs> blow an air horn right and then you got you're on call you got to stand up in front of your tent they come by check if you're in there if you're not if they're missing someone if you don't have five people in there you're done so you got to have seven people all with different class schedules right because yeah. you got to be able to do it and then you're in there and it's winter dude it's cold it's snowing oh raining is that God. a real people thing? got heaters in there their tvs oh yeah it's real like TVs? there's dorm rooms that probably go empty for like a month or two i forget how long it is but it's it's a month at least a month over a month yeah and so basically you you go through this whole process if you get busted not having enough people or whatever breaking rule you bump to the end of the line 
and you do all of this just to then have the opportunity to take a test right and the test is on duke basketball history so this whole time what? you're in the tent. Oh, oh hell no. Crying. The whole time, oh, I swear no. to God, I swear oh, to God. hell no. The whole time you're in the tent, you're studying for this trivia test, right? And it's it's, it's a pretty tough test. For I mean, months? joking, dude. I mean, yeah, and like, yeah. There's no way God. this so, is so, true. So why, so why would you take the test so that you can get, a, you can get so in? So then you get the ticket. You're in. So what if you fail the test? Dude, UNC, and when those guys get in there, if you fail the test, back of the order, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah, I've had friends crazy, do this. Yeah, the, the the some of the soccer guys would always like do it. They'd last like three days and then, but yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's we need, wild. We need, yeah. we need to do that on Kirkwood. But like you know how it is, like Purdue, like it's yeah, yeah. backed up has yeah. Briscoe, like. Yeah. But it's a, like that's this year a day. we're playing that's overnight. That's, like that's we're about day. to start playing Kentucky again. In 2024, yeah, or 2025. The UNC yeah. line was crazy last yeah, year. UNC was nuts. UNC was crazy. like when when there's a hype. We know how to hype. Yeah. We know how to hype up shit. Yeah. And live up to it, dude. They, yeah. yeah. They got yeah. it done. And we're on the upward trajectory. They, they got it done. Tra- yeah. They got it done. That's one thing they did, want. dude. They got it done. And they're... And who'd they sign That was day? one of the games that I Lee argued McNeely. with some 67-year-old woman about how I got my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, girl, chill. Leave me alone. She said, can I see the ticket number on your seat? I said, it's one right next to you, baby. Well, look at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's like, well... We just never see you here. I was like, I know I don't have season tickets here. It's okay. Dang. Not yet. Old lady was on your case, bro. Bro, the amount of times that I've been to a game and I've gotten tickets from... One time, uh, I got a ticket from one of the coaches on the football team, so they had me in, like, the family section. Right? Oh, and it's, real. like, the family section about. where you can go up and grab, like, get... F- Get food and stuff, right? So oh, you were in the sky. You're up there the whole time. Like, nobody's ever seen me there before, right? So I'm confused even walking there. Yeah. As I'm sitting up here, I'm I'm here for like a full quarter and a half. Like it's almost through the second quarter. I've only eaten the popcorn and Chick Fil A that I got. The little sour patch kids <laughs> that I brought up from the concession stand. Sam Server. This yeah. woman comes over to me, and she's one of like the red shirt ladies. She was super sweet, but she goes, "Honey, I've been sitting up here this whole game." And I've been trying to wonder if I've seen you here or not. Do you have tickets up here? And I started laughing and I was like, yeah, I got my tickets. And I started feeling around. I find them and I show her. And she's like, well, how'd you get these tickets? Because it's only supposed to be family up here. <laughs> and I was like, well, I, I I do this. This is how I'm connected with some of these people. And she's like, oh, well, I guess it's none of my business then. <laughs> and she turned around and just started walking off. I was like, all right, that's like, that was, pretty, that was cool of her, I guess. Yeah. But there's been some people that have been so oh, the red rude shirt people. Me, bro. Oh, you get it. So you get a great rude. one. Sometimes not so great. Yeah. My guy David, uh, in assembly though, he wears one of the red shirts. When I say my seats usually like up in section like five, six, or seven on the edge, and uh, he's usually like, "Hey man, go ahead, slide right down here." <laughs> you got your case. back. When I when I first met you guys, um, yeah. any anybody on the soccer team, he was letting me sit in your guys' seat, and you guys were getting acknowledged that day, so they gave you all those seats right there. But oh, usually right. they're they're empty for shit like that. So uh, I was sitting right there, and he came over and he said, "Hey man, I hate to do it to you, bud, but the soccer team's gonna be here. You gotta go up to your normal seat." So I'm like, "All right," and I didn't know any of you guys at the time. So I'm like, I go up there. I had my little cousin and my brother with me. And we're sitting back up at our seats and I remember like looking down at where you guys were and I was like Hawkeye and you you know what I'm saying and I was like I don't cut anybody on the soccer team right now and I was like I think I'm gonna I'm gonna use this moment as an opportunity yeah. and I had I had a, a couple business cards on me or something but you guys went and sat down and it was right before halftime that you guys went got acknowledged so I tell them I'm like at halftime I'm hitting the concession stand I'm gonna run in. I'm gonna run in to one of them, and I'm just gonna introduce myself and start talking about a haircut. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> literally, I go down there, and and Muni comes out of the bathroom, and the I'm the only s- guy who doesn't get a fade. Li- the only, <laughs> yeah, literally. So I, I'm sitting on this golf cart just chilling, and and he comes walking out, and he's got like soccer shirt on. So I sit up, and I'm like, "Hey, you play on the soccer team, right?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I was like, look, I just want to congratulate you on all the success you guys are having this year and uh, introduce myself if there's ever a time that you might want a haircut, you know what I mean, before one of the games or anything like that. Like, let me know, man. I'd love to. 
Next thing you know, he starts introducing. It was like everybody started hitting me up after that. You know what I'm saying? So, like that one interaction. By the time you guys went off to, uh, it was the Elite Eight, and then yeah, Greensboro and Carry. Yep, yeah. and then the Final Four, and I got to cut um, a few of you guys right before then, and then you guys left out to North Carolina, came back after you won the Elite Eight, and I did like a, uh, I hosted like a little event where I just invited. Everybody on the soccer team to come get cut before they left out. I, ch- I catered in Chick Fil A. Like it was like a whole little ordeal. Yeah, it, it made me feel really good Great to be vibe, able to yeah. do it. You know what I'm saying? That was awesome. And I got to meet everybody. Like that was the first time I got like everybody in the same area. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Brings the team together. Like little moments like that. Yeah, yeah. off the field. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like 100%. you guys get to be together still and like not be thinking about soccer. Yeah. Like you guys can just chill. Barbershop combo. What what makes a barber cane haircut so special? <sighs> the quality, the precision, <laughs> the experience, the uh, the words, the, the atmosphere, the ambiance. Yeah. yeah, the conversation. The conversation. No, it's honestly like the the first time I went to Kane, like just the like you just, it's it's the, you don't come for the cut. You you come for the cut. You stay for the conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like you're just talking to a good dude. You know? I love that. It's the trust, yeah. dude, and they're inspiring. You know, like yeah, and, and your story is incredible. And like, I hope you guys have your own podcast with just you know, it's your story and yeah. Trey's story and Jack's story. But yeah, serious stories. We all got. You don't got a good story. I feel like you got a good story. Trey's got a really fucking got crazy a story. story. I bet. Jay, really Trey's got crazy stories. I've seen videos of Trey. Bro, be quiet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How was your night last night? Just say that to chill. Listen. I've seen some videos of Trey, and I could just imagine what he was like growing up. <laughs> what you were know? you like growing up? I was cocky. Uh, he was an athlete. Look at a, him. Well, I wasn't. I, you see those legs? Half this of his, is the peak male. A little bit of a little bit over half of his body is legs. A lot of leg, a lot of heart. I was I was ner- well. I grew up in a school. I was like the only white person, so it wasn't like a regular, or you know, like it wasn't like most white kids here i don't know it's hard to yeah, explain yeah, no, I, I was just you know i was white in a mostly black school i, I wanted to be fresh right. i was but I, but, but you know what he I mean? said I'm I, I didn't fit into like a, a normal <laughs> st- like i didn't fit into like a stereotype of like a, a normal high school experience for americans like it's very rare that yeah, yeah you know like 100%. um it's hard for me to see somebody wear kooji one day and a camouflage hat the next you know what i mean i think that you're <laughs> very versatile i got range man. i got mad range bro I got crazy range. I don't. But got I want to be fresh. I, I always this, worked bro. when I was when I was young. I always worked. Um, always had a job, um, and just like I guess the clothing aspect is just I wanted to be fresh because the only way that I could stand out and you know, I guess like make friends was being fresh. So where did vintage come from? So I I, I worked a lot and I made you know I made I was a lifeguard and all the money I would get from lifeguarding I would spend on clothes at the mall and then eventually I realized. Just probably spending like I don't know how much all of my money as a kid at the mall I was like holy crap you know like junior year high school I was like oh like I could just thrift and save all the money and still be fresh and then I f- started hearing about people selling clothes online from b- thrifting like Ralph like polo and selling it online I was like oh I'll, I'll just pick up everything Ralph and sell it online and then I quickly got introduced to guys like locally um, who did like more like qu- like wholesale quantity stuff Yourself, JT, are you a vintage guy? Or are you more of like a name guy. brand? Do you like uh I'm vintage I'm a vintage guy, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love I love a thrift shop. Uh most of my closet now is thanks to Trey, I'll be honest. You've got you've got an old soul to you. I, I, think, I do I have an old soul to me. I, I'm told that, yeah. Trey Trey's the same way. You think? you know, looking at you right now with that stash, that shirt, those pants, those what about shoes. Me? <laughs> <laughs> You're like well, who uh, is Jack? Yeah, that is a good question. Who we don't know much about Jack? you, Jack. Jack is like Dobby from what is that? Harry Potter? <laughs> Dobby. Dobby. Listen, my story will be told. All the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, no, I hear. I'm it. telling I, my story right now. That's what now. I'm saying. I bet it's such mm. a beautiful story. You like that? that he was said was I'm tough. telling my story right now. That was tough. Put that in a new album. Bit. I see you, my boy. <laughs> no, but for real though, shit. High school was interesting because I wasn't I wasn't athletic and I was an athlete. But I don't know. I've always been an odd one. I've always been an oddball G. I've always been, uh, you know. I can see that. I've always been like a. I don't know. It's just. I think it's. Just uh, going against the current. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent contrarian. Um, 
problems with authority. That type of shit. Which is like kind of that's kind of like the basis of like <laughs> this is not a dating application. Shut up. <laughs> this is but this is like the basis of like my 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 drive is because the reason why I started my own business is because I didn't want someone fucking telling me what to do. You know, no, what I, mean? I hear that. It's like part of like my yeah, you know, my gift to make my it your own. Yeah, part of my gift to my curse is that I have problems with people telling me what to do, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. But with who's your I want, it's been awesome. Yeah. You know, it's been a godsend. Because you've been able to be yourself. And, and I think that people hear me out because and it's something that that I'm kind of experiencing myself people oddly respect you when you when you're unapologetically yourself yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. when, when and I think the same way like I try to bring uh, like my own inspiration to everything like you bring something different to the table than what your average person is bringing you know what I'm saying like your normal person is going to text you and they're going to say W-Y-D question mark. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, I feel like you're the person that's going to say, like, yo, cousin, what you, what you, what you got popping for the day? <laughs> so like fast, bro. You pick up, though, you see Trey's FaceTime you, know you and you're what like. I'm saying? You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. And he's going to be like, yo. Yeah. <laughs> but it just, bro, it just makes you feel good. Like, it 100%. makes you feel appreciated. It's good energy, Dude. dog. That's right. I, there's this book that I've been reading again. I've read it a couple times and I'm listening to it actually, but it's uh, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And one of them is uh, The Law of Giving. And it's like uh, not, not giving, you know, money or anything like that, but it's so easy to give somebody like something. You know what I mean? Even if it is like, yo, JT, I'm not going to lie, your hair kind of looks swaggy today. Like, yo, your, smile. your stash, you know what I'm saying? Like, you open the door for somebody and it's like, yo, I, have, I hope you have a great rest of your day. You know what I'm saying? Like, most yeah. of the time, easy, people, bro. it's just, it's, it's that so easy. It's so easy to give. And it's not even like, like, praying for somebody. Like, like I can, I can still wish good on people and that's still a form of giving in a great way. But it's like being able to vocalize it and create that vibration. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's going to make somebody else feel good. This, this dude, I ran a 5K today. One of my buddies ran 13.2. He, he ran a mini today, right? And uh, wow. I know we both work, we're, we both get up around 5 a.m. to start our day normally anyway, so, like, today didn't change for me any. I woke up at 5, I went to the gym, I got some breakfast, and then I went to do the run. And uh, I texted him when I first got up, and I was like, yo, and just running with him, you know what I mean? We've I've learned a lot about him. He's learned a lot about me. So I texted him just, like, to give you know what I mean? And my, my only, it was 542 when I sent the message and I was like, yo, I just want to wish you great luck today. I know you're going to do awesome. Um, I said something along the lines of like, I want to thank you for your determination in life and for being so profoundly yourself and being in love with that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm grateful that I met you. And it's like, I know how I would have felt on the receiving end of a message like that. So even to be able to like, put like formulate words to make somebody feel good like that was like a like a powerful giving message to me you know what i'm saying and i think that in that sense yeah the more people do stuff like that the better the world gets dude yeah good deed a day baby good deed a day you, it, it'll it'll start to circulate in your life like you'll naturally start receiving random compliments like that comes back to that. you know what i'm saying it does i my favorite thing to do like small thing like that is uh, when there's like a traffic cone in the middle of the street, or there's something like in the road, or like a tree, or like something that's like fucking up, <laughs> fucking up traffic. It's fucking up traffic. I'll stop and I'll get it instead of just driving past. Like yeah. the 400 people that were there and could have fixed it before me. Are you the type of guy to stop and help somebody jump their car? I never carry jumper cables, but yeah. No, but if they got the jumper cables, yeah, you know, of course. happily, You'll stop here's and my ask car. Them what's going on? No, I'll do that. One time I needed to jump. Oh, this is a funny story. One time I was in high school, and I was I was in my car with my my girlfriend at the time in high school. And you know when you're at in the a time when you're in a, when you're in a car with your girlfriend in high school, stationary. A lot of things can be misinterpreted. Yeah. You know, but that's the only way you can get it on. You know what I mean? Intense. And I left the fucking car on. Oh, I, left, I, I left the car on, or like I left like something something was oh, no. on. So the car Life. died. I'm in the fucking, <laughs> I'm in the fucking back of like an Arby's or some shit. <laughs> and my car is completely it's dead. And it's like it's like 11:30 at night, and I didn't know what to do. And a cop and a cop rolled up, and I was like, Oh my fucking god! Did it smell like anything? Way. No, 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 no. Um, 
<laughs> it might have smelled like hey, it might have like car freshener. It might have smelled like some damn coucherine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, oh, bro. Oh. Um, and then yeah, we got to jump from the cop. But I thought I thought I was over, really, bro. Nah, cops always got your back. Most <laughs> protect and serve. Yeah. Hey, shout out, shout out all the law enforcement out there. <laughs> Men in blue. Yeah. Well, yeah. There are good cops and bad cops. There are good people and bad people. 100%. I like to think of myself as a good one. A good cop? People. <laughs> oh, I was about to say. <laughs> I thought good I did not know. Tell me your good story. Cop, cop. No, I don't know. All right, you want to take a break? Yeah. Ugh. Like, gir- girls want a guy that's, that they can take care of. That doesn't have a job. That You know what I'm saying? Like, Hell no. That's, no, that's they the do type not, of bro. guy. Hell like, no, <laughs> bro. Hell Jack, no. tell him. That's cap, bro. That is not. That's not real. I don't even know where to start. I don't even that. know how to answer that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just tough. Girls are. I don't know. All right, no want. girls. I don't we know. Whole, we could have a whole podcast. No girls. But I, you, hey. you just don't know what they want. Like, am I going to be superhero or am, or am I going to be a trash can? You know, yeah. there's no in between. I, I can like, never really win. When I realized that men and women were different, <laughs> uh, I, one, one time I was seeing a girl. And uh, when was this? How, how old? I was you? I was like seventeen. Okay. She, so you know, kind of early in my my career. Um, Your career. And I was seeing this girl, <laughs> and basically, I'd heard something from one of her friends, and I talked to her, and I, she was like, "I was like, why didn't you tell me that? You know, this is, you know, this is what you how you want to be treated or whatever." And she said, "Well, if I tell you, then it's just not the same." <laughs> and, I said, and then I realized, holy shit, this person expects me to. You know, no, underst- no, ex- no, a specific thing, basically. Yeah. Without, no, without any context. It's like me going to a restaurant and being like this. Oh, you wanted the chili cheese dog with extra well, it's just fr- not the cheese same. on your fries? Yes, yeah, it's just not the same if, if I have to tell just you what I want. Him. Just look at him. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You know, that's the that was the craziest thing because guys is a simple. You know, guys. You know, what do you want? You know, BJ. You know. Lift heavy things, maybe like a house. I'm sorry. <laughs> Food. What? A dog. You know I just what I mean? Get lost in these convos, bro. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah, it's like you know, work and you come home, you do you do that for your stuff. I feel like give Trey a mic. This is where we get, dude. I think I think the thing that, that really separates men and women now psychologically is that men are basically never owed anything for for you know shit. Say that again. Men are men in English. Men aren't owned, owed anything. You know what I mean? Like we have to. I don't know. I mean, this is a controversial take. I don't want to talk about. We understand. We <laughs> hey, understand. We understand. If you want something, you I can't think, just ask people for it. I think. I think what you're saying here, and we've we've heard it a couple times. We aren't gifted. We, no, 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 no. Women, dogs, animals. You know what I'm saying? They're loved unconditionally. Men are loved based on what they can give. Yeah, what they can. Yeah, provide that's facts, bro. Oh, that's tough. Ingrain it in hey, shout out all the real men out there. You know what I mean? All you all you guys hanging out on the couch, we love that you're watching the pod. I love you. Shout do, out the boys and the ladies. We, we do 25 push ups right now. We love the moms too. I love, love the moms. I love are, my mom. Listen. I love my mom. If you it wasn't mom, for my JT? mom, I wouldn't be who I, I am. Do too. Shout out the moms. Let's let's you know, let's how ha- how has our mothers impacted our lives? Wow. You want to go, a, JT? That's a take right there. That's a take right there. Damn, bro, that goes deep. If you want to be honest, so so <coughs> small part of my story. <laughs> uh, my dad passed away when I was super young. Um, my mom took care of me. She had me super young. It was a uh, we grew up together. You know what I'm saying? It was like I had to grow up really fast naturally just to kind of help her out but it was like the things that she was learning i was subconsciously learning so as i got older it was like i was naturally a little more understanding of things than i felt like a lot of my peers were so like even now where i'm at being able to uh, see as deeply into things i feel like it was because i watched somebody that was just you know 15 years older than me go through life right in front of my eyes you know what i mean so yeah. Yeah. being able to grow from her mistakes at a young age that was powerful and she's a great woman you know what i mean i love her to death she used to 
mess my knuckles up, but it's all for good, for good fun. And you know what I mean. What about you, JT? I don't even ever begin. My mom. Oh man, she. I mean, she started. She. I have a, two sisters, one older, one younger. Yeah. And my first, my oldest sister. She. She was born. Um, born early. Born with. A gazillion health conditions. She yeah. was given minutes at birth. Um, so, you know, after those few minutes go by, it's like every minute's a blessing, you know. Yeah. And my mom went through that. Um, she was able to provide for her. She raised her. She took her to every doctor across the country, got help, um, you know, all the time maintaining a job, uh, a marriage, and, you know, raising that daughter right to then say you know what i want to have another child and i come along and i have my own path right i'm all over the board and i have you know you've got one daughter you're taking across the country for different operations you have a son who's got every practice that you can think of every night of the week you're working full-time job and then on top of that she goes i'm gonna go and adopt a third child from guatemala so when i was four or five years old my earliest memories are when we went to guatemala and i met my youngest sister and she's had her fair share of battles and you know it's not like these just went away i mean they're still going both still going through it i'm still going through it and this whole time i mean to see her you know she's working long nights she's working she goes works nine to five come home she's at the computer still working and not once does she ever say no to us she never she our childhood she took us she showed us the world and that's like for us as kids like that was everything and that's like what I contribute to my success is I saw the world. I saw what poverty looked like in Guatemala. I yeah. saw I saw what Morocco looked like in a time of instability and uh, religious wars. I saw literally the world. And I met people from all different backgrounds. And so, like, from a young age, I felt like I matured very early. And I was able to sympathize with a lot of different people and that gave me a different perspective on life oh yeah so, i mean i mm. i still to my to this day she's i think she's a saint like i, I don't know what it is i don't know how she did it <laughs> uh, someday i'll find out hopefully a long time from love, now. Really. Yeah. love yeah love it's i love. think i think we can all speak on this but i feel like your mother's always going to be there for you right like in ways you talk about like you you witnessed her grow up like i almost feel like my mother is like just guiding me through she wants to live my life bro she's yeah, just vicariously she, living she's through she's right never now. gonna like leave me to just she'll let me fall yeah she won't yeah. let me fail right yeah fall. yeah um and she's always gonna be there she's always gonna be up your ass right and i think that's the the best part about my relationship with my mother is yeah no i was gonna say something similar you know what i'm saying no, like, no, she just she'll call me at the worst times she'll text me at the worst times right. but that is what i need because i know that you know i might not get back to her in that second but i'm gonna get back to her and i'm she's always gonna be there as my rock and yeah and i need to understand that relationship and and give more because she's giving everything yeah. right like yeah. i'm i was the first born so I'm everything to her, right? And so I need to I everything I do, I feel like I'm just trying to do it for my parents in 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 ways because yeah. I'm the yeah. firstborn and I, I feel like I want to set the example for my two youngest, but like I don't know, now I'm just yapping. No, oh, go ahead. Bro. I think one thing that I really learned from my mom is what something looks like when it's actually completely done, right, and finished and how to like just not have an ounce of complacency. Just I just remember, bro, I remember cleaning, like, my room or, like, whatever, cleaning my room, and she would just hound me so hard. If there was just, you know, like, oh, this is it, you know, there's, like, a piece of paper on the ground or something like that, you know, like, and just, like, that, that's, that spirit of, like, you know, just, like, I don't know, just, that's kind of inspirational to me because, like, it's so easy to just, like, go through your life and just, like, 80% do everything, you know what I mean? Just, like, half-ass everything and just go through in the motions. I feel like it's what, it's easy for people, but like having that that drive just because you want it to be right, to do it right, you know, at any cost, that's, I think that's like something that's kind of inspired me. Yeah, and talking about like living vicariously through your, your child, like for me with my mom, like 
she's been the as an athlete right you see a lot of athletes and you think okay he's a basketball player he's a soccer player like this is life this is what makes me tick but you forget like man like for me at least like there's a million things i want to do in my lifetime like i would love to be i would love to run a zoo you know yeah. i'd love to be <laughs> yeah. i would love to be a bat i'd love to be a rock star oh, i would love right. to be an artist Preach it to the choir you know? like there's like in life is so short and my mom will be the first one to be like do it all like seriously yeah just yeah do my it mom all said the same thing to me last week bro literally same exact words just chase your dreams yeah who cares just yeah. chase them so i have a question um kind of being being able to go and experience all those kind of walks of life and get getting to see see that do, do you think that that plays a role in uh your interest in art and yeah and yeah, like yeah. painting just kind of the simplicity of it yeah what, what do you think yeah no it's it's yeah my mom like she exposed us to everything when we were kids so like uh, music art sports i mean everything like there wasn't going to be one stone unturned and she wanted to make sure that i found my my passion and my what i want to pursue and so yeah as a kid she she exposes to that stuff and so for me it was a way to to see the world and to you know learn from different people's perspectives and for for me art is an interesting way it's just a way to look at life and that's why like for me my my grandfather really likes the impression move impressionist movement in france so claude monet vincent van gogh um we'll go down the list and for me like that's what i find most fascinating a because it was a way to connect with my grandfather and like for me it's it means the world to be able to sit and talk to him and he this, it gives me a glimpse into how he sees life because he can resonate with that and now i can resonate with that and i mean you look at a uh, claude monet and like you know the way he saw life uh, it, life was always moving for him right so it, you see it in his brush strokes and you learn the little things about okay he had cataracts so now his paintings start taking a tint of red which is a little interesting fascinating things but like it captures a person's perspective on life yeah you know so like yeah you know it's like for some people it doesn't you know make them tick i'm not saying i'm an art kind of suit but like i appreciate it because i like to see how people see life in a given moment i mean you're an artist you yeah you're a, you're a barber you know look behind us you know we're all artists art. you're a goalie yeah. you know that's art bro no it's not yeah, yes it <laughs> is bro it's it's not <laughs> No, but like uh, it's true. like the way you play a sport. Like for me, like the way I play as a goalkeeper. Like I want to use my feet. I'm not yeah. six five. Okay, yeah. I'm not gonna be the guy who's you know gonna stand on his line, use his height to make saves, claim crosses. I can't do that. Yeah. So I need to express myself in other ways. And for me, it's distribution. I want to be able. I want people to come off the pitch and be like, man. And it, it's happened where like I'll, I'll have a session or something, and someone be like, man, I thought I got the feel. I thought you were a midfielder. And to me, that's like, that's that's the compliment I want to hear. Heck like yeah. yeah, it shows that I, I, it's more. I'm more than just a goalkeeper, and I, I can do different things that other players can't. That's what's going to separate me. And yeah. people people lose out, or like, I think that's a really underrated skill for a goalie is distribution and putting the ball in the right place, starting it off. I mean, a lot of guys can make saves, but you know, in the ne in that next level, you need to be able to have a keeper who knows where to put it. Um, yeah, absolutely. I always had bad distribution. But I would always run out really heavily. I would, I would, I I would come do. out I crazy. Yeah, yeah. He has bad distribution because his legs are so long. <laughs> I he don't have my legs that long. Look at you right now. All legs, all heart. You, you know in FIFA when you try and... You hold you the Y button? You, you try and take it the distance with the goalie. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done that in real life? Mm. No, no. What about an indoor? No, okay. See, this divides like the Like back in the day, like, yeah, I feel like, you know, middle school days. Yeah. You were definitely tough. Yeah, recess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like in that stuff, but like... I like okay. This is my like. I will the the locker room will be up in arms because I to my till the day I die I will argue that I have every right to play forward or midfield at a like high that. level program and I will die on that sword. And part of it's 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 fun like sure. I, I love arguing causing drama and like that. <laughs> but yeah. like part, I I believe it and like for me like so what people don't b believe is when I was at Duke we had a preseason scrimmage and you know everyone's playing and um i played the first half and goal i started and then we start to go through rotation and get other guys looks it's a preseason game so it was a, it was a scrimmage and didn't have any effect on the season so a couple guys go down with hamstrings in the first half and they come up to me at halftime like hey like we, we're struggling with numbers like would you want to play the nine and i was like 
I've been dreaming for this moment my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's my jersey? Yeah. Got the jersey. Get a few touches early in the game. Beat a few players in the dribble. You know, it's kind of like, oh, like, look at the goal. Corner kick. Ball comes in. Center back goes up. Falls down. Right on my lap. Grab the goal. Right no the way. That's so awesome. Yeah, it was so the fun. coolest moment of my life. <laughs> meant nothing, but it meant everything. No, that's Hell so yeah. awesome. So all the goalies day, say they yeah. can play on the field. Every single yeah, goalie. I can say I scored a goal yeah. in a D one game. Preseason, preseason scrimmage. Friendly. Count it. It's a goal. <laughs> it's I a goal. I have scored a goal. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I've never even kicked a soccer ball at a goal. <laughs> Are you serious? We got to get you out to I'm the field. So That's crazy, bro. I'm so you got to come serious. with Trey. Trey comes, man. I would fuck Trey up. Bro. You're one v one, bro. Pff, you've penalties. never touched a soccer bro, ball. I would we jack take five him up penalties, in penalties, all right? Five bro. penalties each. I've got your goalie. Five. You're shooting. No, you you're the switch. goalie. No, you're no, the no, goalie, no, no, and no, no, we're no, the three no. kickers. I'd do that. How many? How many goals do you think we would score? Penalties. See, I don't know. I don't know what you're capable of. The, I know they both Trey's suck, capable. and okay. So Sorry, measure me. Trey. I'm Trey. No, so, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, and I, I am. You have a big a soccer ball. Bro. Have you kicked a soccer ball? Yes, I'm nice okay. with it, bro. I shot an ad with Sam Sarver, footballs. and I and I I let's just say my top right blast is is there. Top right blast. Top bins. No, my my man said the top right yeah. blast. <laughs> like it was a like it was a new flavor of a soda. Dairy Queen flavor. <laughs> Sam Sarver special. Mm, the top I, right blast. How many times am I going to mention him this episode, yeah. bro? Big, big shout out Sam Sarver. Shout out I Sam think, Sarver. I think, uh, see this floor right here? Dog, <laughs> stop. I want to know how many, how many would we score? All right, all right, all right. Out of five, up, five, five, five. We each get five. We each get five. PKs. You will each. I'm at least getting three. At I'll least. Give you, I'll give you two. <laughs> It's so bullshit, bro. He's a, he's a Division One goalie. I know. You're not going to go three for five. I give, I give Kane bro, hot take. What I do give you Kane mean? zero. Yeah, I think that's I fair. give you one. If I score one, Dang. I'm happy. I'm happy, bro. I need one, bro. I, no, I'm not easy. practicing P- out there, bro. bro it's not PKs, easy. PKs, PKs tough. I mean, it's the hardest thing in, in life. No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> PKs, two. PKs are... I give Can I get two. zero? I would get more than you two. You think he's better than me? I don't know. I've never seen you kick a ball. It's a different beast. He said he's never kicked a soccer ball at a, See, at a goal See, that's what's before. concerning That's to crazy. Me. Watch that's me go right. out there and score all five, bro. I'm a... <laughs> tough. I'm <laughs> tough. You're not tough. No, You're not I, tough. On the other hand, I'm fucking Trey up for sure. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it. What sport you can you care. beat me in? You don't even care. I'm fucking Trey up. <laughs> what sport can you beat me in, Kane? Ping pong. Not basketball. Uh, not ping pong. <laughs> Maybe we football. Talk. We're football. gonna have a, we're gonna have a few challenges for you guys coming up on the next few episodes. And uh, I'm just saying, bro. You, I you, like this. I'm back. I got you. I got I'm back. You. Hands back. We can do yeah, any activity. I think I would beat Jack in basketball if you I can put it. You put one on you put one. It, you put it on. Let me know. What we're me doing. and Trey would be a good matchup. I like this. B ball. I think I do too. Who's your barber talk Olympics? I mm. think I think uh, every guest is entered. You potentially Ooh. you potentially have me in basketball. Potentially. potentially, I got you in basketball. I think it would be a good game, but I I don't know. I got y'all in basketball for sure. Potentially in ping pong. No, dude, I'm so much better than you at ping pong. It's not even funny. <laughs> no. You you play with like paddles that don't have any grip on them. Hey, buddy. Yeah, not Come regulation here. size. Fifty dollar paddles. <laughs> no, it is, this is you got a new one. That's regulation. A nine foot oh, table regulation. Right That's a nine foot table right See, there. See, now it shows he's committed. Yeah. So, so. I'll commit. Ping pong, I got you. I I played competitive ping pong when I was a kid. So we'll we'll let Jack get a list of five things together. Yeah. Yeah. Five what? Oh. Just five challenges for Trey and I to run through. I'll do ping pong and I'm basketball. I'm not involved. Huh? If you want to be involved, no, you can. You're not involved, bro. It's not even worth our time to beat you in every single. You don't thing look thing. athletic enough. Trey is a, is a top tier athlete, Gosh. though. I'm not even gonna show him in the film because I'm just gonna surprise I, him. I know that you got a clip on you. You know what I mean? I believe you. Can you hold the ping pong paddle and wing that thing? Mm, bro. Can you wing that thing? I don't think you can, bro. My ping pong ability is not there, but I'll tell you one thing. I am Adam I am Adam Thielen in Minnesota. That's that's me in terms of my wide receiver ability. 
Wide put me on the I don't know if I believe field. that either, but put we can do that. We can do that. Give me some sticky yeah, gloves. We can do, uh, we can do routes. Mr. Julian Basketball. Edelman. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I yeah. One on one. We need to good. We need one to send on We need to send QB. Get Taven out good. here. Uh, we'll oh, definitely get so one of the QBs. So we'll do. He'll throw it so hard, we'll do though. Basketball. Actual quarterbacks throw the ball so much harder than an average person. What, can you not And baseball? It's just harder. I don't like that excuse. Baseball? Hell no. I never, never, ever. So we're gonna do baseball maybe guys, it's a better thing. We're gonna do basketball. Maybe it is. You need the gloves. I need the gloves, the gloves if he's gonna be rocking it. Basketball, yeah. football, soccer, baseball, and track. Yeah, we do a home Hell, run derby at like a little track. league field. What do you mean? Let's do a I'm home run derby. I know home run derby, ten outs at a little league field. Bloomington Little League. <laughs> I'd never do that. Why? Baseball is stupid. All right, yeah, well, we'd you rock got, your shit, bro. No, that, that, that doesn't matter. That's, the, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. You got to do all five sports. All right. You got to adapt. Bro. I'm, a, I'm an all around. Athlete. What was it? What, what did what did uh, Kai say that is a hexathlon? <laughs> bro, she was. I, I didn't know what she was saying. I was like, huh? Decathlon? I was like, he ran a 5K today. <laughs> <laughs> same thing, right? I don't know. If no. That's the same thing so as like, like a galactalon. In, <laughs> in track in England, it's like a... It's a decathlon. decathlon. No, it's not. She didn't it say decathlon. It's, it's, it's a hexathlon. <laughs> it's a hexathlon and it's seven <laughs> events. Yeah, it is. I know, but it's the same thing. It's literally the What's same thing. What's she called? A hexathlon. Yeah, she said hexathlon. It's like 200 and 800, a, a 400 hurdles. Javelin. She Javelin. said a bunch of crazy shit, but it's Javelin. seven. Decathlon. <laughs> <laughs> it was <up>. electric. Javelon. <laughs> that sounds like someone's name. <laughs> but it was like seven events. So, JT, I, you're gonna be a part of the soccer yeah, shit. Yeah. When I'm, when I'm, I like this idea a lot. Wax no, and Trey. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a, a special guest help us each do each challenge. challenge. JT, remember when we we, we, we do golf? Played, no. I was in golf. No golf. Yeah. Trey, no golf. You've come on multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Remember you I tried to score on you're me? Hit. Kick the you're hit. Remember you tried to score on me? We can do tennis, darts. bro. We don't talk there. <laughs> tennis, tennis and golf. We can get. Tennis I got you. Uh, tennis is fun. I'm tough with we'll the yeah. yeah. But you're probably better than me because you're playing tennis. Can <laughs> you play can pickleball? You play I haven't. We'll do pickleball. Pickleball yeah, is so fun. fun, man. No, we, I mean we got we already got ping pong on the table. I forgot about a lot of racket sports. A little heavy. No, we're doing we're doing we're doing pickleball, not ping pong. Pickleball, I could I could. I could Pickleball it requires a little more athleticism. Respectfully. Yeah. Pickleball is a fun sport, Dude, and it's it up is. and coming in this it world, is. bro. So that's what we're rocking. Players on? We're going to do basketball, like football, do we, do we have soccer, football? baseball, and pickleball. That's a good list. Okay. That sounds like a good, fun time. All right. And we'll do the home run derby. At a, at a little league, I'm like just gonna sit out. You guys can beat me in that dumb shit. Hey, you're not gonna trade. Don't, trade don't play baseball. Off the yeah, it's don't gonna be baseball, so comedic bro. to watch you swing a bat. Off the dome, baseball, off the dome right now. Give me your top five greatest soccer players of all time. Okay, obviously number one is undisputed, undeniable. He is the best to ever play the game, and no one should ever say otherwise. Lionel Messi. We'll go Maradona, the other Argentine. Pele. Yeah. Give me Cristiano Ronaldo. At four. Who's at five? And at five, sneaking in. Give me Zidane. Yeah. That's I think that's I think that's fair. That's that's a Agiza great one at R9. The OG Ronaldo, you, do, you, up there. do you think this is a uh, a special time to be a soccer fan? One thousand percent, one thousand percent. The fact that Messi is playing in the U.S. He came to the MLS, and now people say you come to the MLS. We get we've had big name players before. We've had Beckham. Yep. Um, we just we got Insignia from Napoli. He's at Toronto. Uh, uh, Ab- Ibrahimovic. Zlatan, Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Sergio. But here we are <laughs> with Messi. Sergio. Busquets? Busquets. Busquets, yeah. Busquets? Busquets is here. He joined the team. Jordi Alba. Messi yeah. brought his boys. Messi but the thing the is, game. Messi came in, and it's not like it's not like he's he's enjoying retirement. I mean, he is like, he's playing. He could be playing in Europe right now at the highest level. He just won a World Cup. Like, imagine. Yeah, this yeah. guy, like, was the reason that that team lifted that trophy. Yeah. And he's here in the U.S. now playing. And so, like, so you see the ratings, like, 
it's it's incredible. What this has done for our generation is yeah, incredible. Yeah, huge. So, you know Nick. Yes. Nick Nick's is on. playing at Miami. Yep. Shout out Nick. Nick's coming this week. He's he is? Oh, no yeah, way. That's yeah, yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. He's I coming back him. this week. So, you'll yeah. be here. Hell yeah. Um, He... He's like teammates with Messi. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. And yeah. he was just at IU last year. He was has at he, IU has last he year. Giving you any like funny stories or like about like is is, is it like a separated f- locker room where yeah. Messi allows some of the players in and some some don't you know or so from my understanding Messi is the man like the nicest guy is super quiet his English isn't great but he makes an effort, really like yeah his English isn't great but like he's he's involved like yeah he's he's just a normal dude man like he's a quiet guy like you see him. Like pick people post like him in Publix getting groceries and it's like it's a normal he's, dude, yeah, man. is his bodyguard with him when he's in public? all the time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. But imagine, little man <laughs> like they go from there in last place in the MLS and just sack their manager and Messi comes in and all of a sudden like these guys are walking around they have to have like inner Miami ID cards like the revamp security yeah I mean this is a, a superstar maybe the most famous person we've seen in yeah. a long time yeah um, I mean, the, the team can't take, he told me they can't take pictures with them until the season's over. They can't ask for autographs until the season's over. Teammates. Um, That's some yeah. Tom Brady teammates? shit right there. Yeah, teammates. Holy and like, shit. obviously it's not coming from Messi. And like, the guys have been super cool about it. The, the captain gave his captaincy to Messi when he came in. And, um, but just a good dude. And so Nick, like, I remember the first time he FaceTimed me, he's like, he was shaking. He's like, yeah, dude, like, you, you won't believe it. I, I just... I said hola to Messi, and he said hola back, and I was like, "He practices yeah. with him, right?" Yeah, every, yeah, yeah. That's that's so so sick. What a Insane. moment! That's yeah. so sick. I was like, <laughs> "Like, did he say anything else?" He's like, "No, no." no but like, <laughs> I'm like, "Well, yeah, dude, that's amazing." Let's Let's go. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but he said like Jordi Alba, like he's the class clown. Yeah. Like, Busquets is like what you'd expect, like the more like mature, like wiser guy. But they're they're class guys. They're just you know. Good people, yeah, that's awesome. That is so cool. who happen to be very, very good at school. Yeah, very I feel good. I feel like the everybody that I've met, with the exception of Sam, and he still is, but are all like top tier guys, Class. you know what I'm saying? Super classy yeah. human beings, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Sam's definitely classy in his own yeah. way, you know what I'm saying? He's but, but yeah, Sam's it, from it, Cleveland, yeah, so. it's something in the water in Cleveland, you can't tell me otherwise. Yeah, shout out yeah. Sam, but no, soccer's, <laughs> soccer's class, classy. Classy game. It's a gentleman's game. It is, yeah, it's a. It's the, it's the chess of football. If if if, if we were talking about <laughs> what foot, the chess football. football to football, you know what I'm saying? I think that it's a beautiful game, football bro. is more checkers in comparison to yeah. hey, soccer know, being though, like because, chess because there's I don't know there's so many complexities. I got a I got a final question and then we'll wrap up. But uh, I mean we're talking MLS. It, is that kind of your your goal? Is that an aspiration of yours to get to that next level? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's something that it's been on my mind for a long time, and that's always been the goal. And so, as of now, I have one more year of eligibility. Um, I don't know where I stand on that yet. I still have to make a decision. Um, but I have the opportunity to enter the draft um, at the end of this season, and then if not this season, if I stay for a fifth year, then I can do that next season. Um, but yeah. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exciting. That is very like overseas or anything, you know. You yeah, man. That's and when I first went to Columbus, and this is really the last thing to leave you with, like when I went to Columbus, I met with the coach and they're like, Yeah, you're gonna have a meeting with the, the first team coach, Greg Berhalter. I'm like, because I'm fifteen years old and now Greg Berhalter is the head coach of uh the men's national team here in the yeah. US. But at the time he was at Columbus and I go in and sit down and um I was a bit starstruck. I, you know, you're, you're sweating a little bit, and um, we start talking. He's telling me about the club and, um, you know, why I would fit the club. And as a 15 year old, like this guy did this with academy kids, you know, because like he, he was building something, like you know, and for a kid that means the world to you. And yeah. He goes, um, so tell me, like JT, what are your goals? Like, what what's your ambition? Like, what do you want to achieve as a as a football player? And I was like, well, okay. Um, and I took a very mature like thought out response i was like well like if i'm fortunate enough like i would love to come here to columbus and you know if i'm lucky and i put in the work then i'll get a chance to play for the first team and i would love to sustain a first team career and um maybe someday play for the national team and he looked at me he goes okay so you, you don't want to win the world cup you don't want to play the champions league and it just shows you like you know, 
like yeah like why not like yeah yeah like that should be where your head's at so 100 percent like uh, this is all you know things you gotta think about shoot for the stars you know and so 100%. We'll, see. we'll see i'm just happy to be playing and i'm happy to be at you so we're happy to watch you and we wish you the best best of luck we'll be cheering you on i'm sure thank you know you guys show a lot of love we appreciate it a lot of love for iums 100 percent, dog who's your barber talk episode six in the books guys yeah thank you guys thanks for coming on brother peace